Uh, can you state your name? Uh, my name is Donald Wharton, W-H-A-R-T-O-N. Um, okay. I'm the organizer of the Washington, D.C. Atheist uh, Meetup with over 1,100 uh, members. Wow. And uh, can you tell us uh, how long you've been in charge of that group? Um, it's about 10 years now. Um, it was formed uh, earlier than, than that by my friend Richard Aiken. Uh, and I didn't pay attention to it until sometime after he left the area, and then I wound up uh, sort of inheriting it um, somewhere around 2007. So, you know, it's it's been a joy for almost a decade now. And how many members does that group have? Well, as I said, 1,100 11. plus. Wow, and uh, it's still growing. Yeah. Uh, I don't think... I, I should be mobilizing more leadership you know, to create mm -hmm. events, but uh, it's very hard to get um, atheists and secular humanists to step forward and actually become leaders. Uh, okay. And in this case, you know, what I mm -hmm. most like is just, you know, social get-togethers, you know, where people have enough courage to greet new members and say hi, you know. It's nice to have atheist community in whatever uh, regional area is not served at this point. And uh, how has uh, this group grown or changed in the Washington, D.C. area since you've been uh, its leader? Uh, I, you know, frankly, I didn't even look at how big the group was um, back when I took it over. Mm -hmm. You know, it, um, you know I, I had my, my own desire to do discussion groups and get together with friends. Uh, totally independently of the group, and uh, it became a nice ancillary uh, way of getting more people to show up when I wanted to sit around with a bunch of people and be philosophical. Great. And uh, leading into the, the philosophy of kind of the group, how does uh, your personal religion or uh, absence of religion or religious view influence uh, the way that you see politics? Uh, well, frankly, I had um, a rather bad childhood. Um, okay. My father uh, did not uh, refrain from physical abuse, uh, and there was almost a complete lack of uh, social connectedness with him. Hmm. He was just a monster that came in and punished on occasion. Uh, and... Uh, Putting that together with uh, his religiosity, you know, basically created, uh, once I figured out that God did not exist, and frankly, I have figured that out, uh, you know, and basically I sort of look at Christianity as a potential form of terrorism, you know, to be brutal uh, toward people. You know, it's represented to be loving, but... Uh, you know, you, you look at what happens in the home, and there is tremendous abuse, both with children and spouses. So you think, uh, um, was your father a, a Catholic, or? No, he was a Protestant. Protestant, okay. Um, and the fact that I was an atheist, and uh, let, I, I didn't even tell him that, I told my mother, and presumably she passed it on, and in front of what I could tell, that just increased the potential viciousness of the abuse. Uh, you know, Christianity does not create uh, um, loving kindness. You know, it can on occasion, but if you look at the average impact, uh, it is very tribalistic and negative. Uh, people outside the tribe become less than. Uh, mm -hmm. They violate the sense of purity of the group. Uh, they're worthy of punishment, and uh, this is a basic neurobiological mechanism, this tribalism. Uh, and what we need to do is have a frame of reference that understands and can uplift all people. And I maintain that that has to be done from the perspective of a scientific worldview, where things are seen and looked at as they are, rather than through the lens of mythic nonsense that cannot be verified by the tools of science.